The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was such a beautiful person that he used to dress up beautifully and apply perfume when he used to go home to his family. How many of us, we want our women to look nice, but you look like a tramp. Allahu Akbar. And then we come and complain, she never dresses up for me. Well, do you dress up for her? It's a sunnah. You want to follow the Prophet, peace be upon him. You want to know what kind of a husband he was. He used to smell so good and look so good, subhanallah. He used to say such good words. He used to joke with his family. The, the environment in the home was loving. It was kind. Ours, cat and mouse. Cat and mouse, subhanallah. We enter and the whole environment is messed in the house. The Prophet ﷺ used to joke at times. He used to narrate stories, seat his family down and talk to them, tell them stories about this and about that. Like the hadith of Umm Zara, a nice story. The Prophet ﷺ speaks about things. He used to say things. We don't have time for the family. You get home, it's either, it used to be a way back about newspapers. Then it became the TV. Now it is the phone, subhanAllah. You in, you, you're at home and you're on the phone. What are you doing on the phone? Subhanallah, they are real life people right in front of you. Go and follow the sunnah. You claim to be a Muslim. Well, you are very far from Islam. You only have a small portion of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ used to spend time speaking to his family. So the Prophet ﷺ used to take time to say what he, what he wanted to tell them things. I was saying the women narrate the stories, the men don't. You can have heard a lovely lecture, but when you go back, the only thing you remember is you've got to be an obedient wife. That's what the Imam said. Obedient wife. That's the only thing on your tongues. And another thing is you've got to accept a second wife. It's a topic that people, why do you want to start speaking about things? Is that the only sunnah you know on earth when you don't even have the time to correct your when you're upset and you control your temper with a normal average human being, you will be getting a great reward. Wallahi, when it's your family, you earn Jannah. You earn Jannah. When it is your family, you earn Jannah to Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us blessings. So the Prophet sallallahu used to dress up for who? For his family. How many of you? And I challenge you, it's a Friday. We're talking of the best husband, the most, the, the most blessed of all creation, the highest in rank of all. I tell you one thing, we need to follow him. Let's not just pay lip service to it. It's not just about lip service, my beloved brothers and sisters. Dress up, you go home, take pride in your hair, take pride in your clothing, what you look like, you, what you smell like. You come home, they should look at you and feel attracted. Come on. The Prophet ﷺ was intimate with his spouses and he fulfilled that right of his spouses. How many of us, a month passes, we haven't even been intimate with our halal wife. She's busy waiting. She's dressing up. She's trying to attract you. So I'm tired. You're tired for what? There's an ibadah to happen at night. Some of us might be weak for tahajjud, but you can't come and complain that you cannot be intimate with your own spouse. You get a similar reward. Wallahi. And I'm not ashamed to speak about it. I've spoken about it several times because men are guilty of thinking that women don't have sexual needs. This was the Prophet ﷺ. He tells the companions, Fi budu'i ahadikum sadaqa. Remember when you're intimate with your wife and you fulfill her needs and you satisfy her, it is an act of charity. The Sahaba were rightly so. They asked a question, oh wow, is it really a charity? He says, well, if you put it in haram, would you get a sin? So they said, yes, we would get a sin. Well, if you put it in halal in a proper way and you're conscious of the fulfilling of the rights, you definitely get a reward. That's the messenger. That's the husband. So when you get home and you are intimate with your spouse, remember, even during the menstrual cycle, the Prophet ﷺ used to do everything besides intercourse with his own spouse, subhanAllah. He, and we cannot get into further details, but the Prophet ﷺ has explained this to a certain extent. We stop at that extent. He says everything besides the act itself, because you and I know that is prohibited during the menstrual cycle, but you can still do a lot, subhanAllah. You can still do a lot. Many people, oh, so you're on your cycle. All right, see you after a week. What's going on? I'm being honest. That's a woman. It's not her fault. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Treat them with respect. That is a husband. That is what the Prophet ﷺ told us. He instructed us. He said it with his own mouth, his blessed lips. 
and we sit here saying, I'm a good Muslim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you hear Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everyone should be saying, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but that's not the only right. We say it loudly, but our lives are far away from the same, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How? Do you think that's the only right that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has? Is that when you say his name, you must say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is extremely important. Yes, it is blessed. Yes, it is a must. Yes, you must not miss it. But that's only a part of it. Live your life. Then you will understand that your life is a whole celebration. The whole life is a celebration because you come home, your wife is happy, you are happy, you are focused. The problem with us is we're focused on another woman somewhere outside. That's what it is. We're focused on another person outside. Subhanallah. Astaghfirullah. May Allah protect all of us. Now when you come home and it's halal and it's a sadaqah and it's a charity and your wife has been waiting for you and at times she's actually looking forward to it. She's protected herself as best as she can. And you know what? You just say, I'm tired. Tired for what? If there was a football match, you would have forgotten your tiredness. May Allah forgive us. If there was a UFC match, you would have waited until 3 in the morning. But for your wife, up to 11, also you can't wait. Learn, learn my brothers and sisters. Learn the true sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He was very open in his advice. We do not speak about it from the pulpit. And that's why I really salute those who came up with such a beautiful topic. The Prophet ﷺ, he was very, very kind. Let's go to a point of romance. The Prophet Sallallahu used to kiss his wives, subhanallah. He used to kiss them and the kisses are described. I don't have the time for because it's Jumu'ah. But if I could describe that kiss, I don't want to know what might happen to our Jumu'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. And the Prophet Sallallahu used to eat and drink or drink from the same spot that his wife drank from. With us, if she drank from a cup, I can't drink from that cup. Why? I don't know, I might just get a cough, something else might happen. Subhanallah, he used to find the same place she drank from and drink from it. Wow, this is mentioned by his own wife to say he was so romantic. He used to make us blush. Have you made your wife blush? You say, yeah, she gets red very often. She gets red with anger, not blushing. <laughs> May Allah forgive us. It's a reality. So this was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, he used to lean on his spouse, leaning. Sometimes he would lean, he would put his leg on, on her thigh, etc. And you know what? It's described in the hadith. Did you know that? Did you know that? So we will do it, a'udhu billah, with someone haram. But halal, no ways. That's my wife. She should know I love her. He would declare his love for his spouse. He said, Allah has blessed me with the love of Khadija. That's what he says. I love her. How many of you tell your wives, I love you? Say it in the presence of your children, no problem. They will learn how to treat their wives and, and their spouses when they grow older. The problem with us, our children don't know how to live because we haven't lived in their presence. We've hidden the good things sometimes. So the children don't know how to be with their spouses. If they see you sometimes joking, sometimes laughing, sometimes sitting and talking, smiling, etc., they will know how to operate in life. The Prophet ﷺ took the time to play games with his spouses. Games. He would, he would literally race with some of his spouses. Come, let's race. I run from here to there and let's see who wins. Subhanallah. It may not be racing in our case, but it could be. It's still a sunnah, but it could be any other game. I will, I, I'm sure I'll take you out. Subhanallah. Let's play this game. Would you? We don't have the time. Why are we too busy with all other things? Your spouse comes first. Family first. Remember that it's an Islamic idea. Wallahi. Family first is an Islamic idea. Obviously, this is after Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That is worship. Now we're talking of worshiping Allah, following the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But when it comes to relationships, your family is definitely first. If your family comes after your friends, you have lost. You are far from being a true Muslim. Far. Your family first and then your friends. Now what happens is at night, the Prophet ﷺ taught us that if you don't have anything constructive to do after Salat al-Isha, go to bed. Why? Wife is waiting for you. The problem with us, we'll go to bed but still be on WhatsApp until 2 in the morning. Right? Subhanallah. The wife tosses and turns this way and that way. I hope it's not the other way around, mashallah. But tossing, turning and you're not getting the message. Subhanallah. She's trying to touch you and you say, hey, wait. 
But where is the Islam in you? Your Islam should make you think, why am I taught to come to bed here? For what? I'm supposed to go to bed because I have a spouse. Why did you get married if you don't want to spend the nights with your wife? For what? Sit with her, talk to her, play with her, be intimate with her, fulfill her rights, satisfy her, go to bed, get up for Salatul Fajr or Tahajjud, and don't be ashamed to have a shower. Even if the whole house knows what happened at night, so what? It was halal. It's a reality. It's an honor. It's an honor for someone to shower early in the morning. And they are thinking to themselves, I wonder what the whole home is going to think. But anyway, I followed Islam. This was Islam. Not ashamed. Your children will grow up doing the same thing. But some of us are so ashamed. We say, hey, it's Fajr, but I don't know. Allah opened your eyes for you. But I'm going to go for a shower. Don't worry. Allah will forgive me. I'll just make it at 8 o'clock. What? May Allah forgive us truly. Imagine I'm talking about it from a pulpit on the day of Jumu'ah because we are proud to acknowledge that is Islam. Allahu Akbar, it's my religion and yours. It's my religion and yours, subhanallah. Let's go further. The Prophet sallallahu at times he had his spouse comb his hair and so on. He played with their hair as well. So much of this romance and intimacy that is described for us, it's, it's, it's actually sad how far we've become the only sunnah that the men actually talk about or a lot of them talk about is, is, don't pretend like you don't know guys. Subhanallah. Second wife, it's a sunnah. Wow. Second is a sunnah. What sunnah? Start off with these things. Correct it is. I'm not denying it, but I'm saying you haven't even lived as a husband yet and you want to start being a husband for more. You've messed up one's life. You're going to mess up all the other's lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So the Prophet ﷺ used to laugh with them. He used to extend help in the home to his spouses. He actually... The Prophet ﷺ used to praise his family members, his wives, he used to praise them, especially with others. He has spoken about Aisha radiallahu anha. You know what he says? He says, the virtue of Aisha over that of all other women is like Tharid over the rest of the food. Now Tharid was a beautiful dish. It's a dish of Jannah. And at the same time, it's something that is loved, you know. So he says she is better than all the other women. She is, her virtue is very, very high. Would you ever say that about your wife? My wife is tops. Just that tops is enough. Subhanallah. A man thinks sometimes that he's going to be considered small when he praises his wife. Say the truth. You don't have to talk about the negatives. Behind the backs, you're not supposed to talk about negatives regarding normal human beings. With your family members, you are supposed to cover them. You are supposed to protect them. You are supposed to be a libas, a clothing for them. When I wear clothing, the gash that I may have due to an operation that I might have had when I was a kid is covered. You can't see it. The same applies when you are a clothing to your spouse. You don't have to go and tell them all the bad. You say the good things. Subhanallah, that's my wife. What are you talking about? She's a lovely lady. Mashallah. I really respect her. I really acknowledge she sacrifices so much for me, for the children. But you know, we are weak. Sometimes we don't know how to reciprocate it. May Allah make it easy for us. So this is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to be happy. When they used to get their friends over. Wow, this is a tough one, right? Wife, her friends come over and what happens? The Prophet used to actually make way for them. They used to be shy. With us, your friends are coming. What's happening? How can your friends be here? Am I not here? So once in a while you need to have the friends over. Yes, I do agree. If they're there every day, all day, subhanAllah, it will create a bit of a disaster. But we're talking of once in a while, the Prophet ﷺ used to be happy, allow her to mix with her friends as well. For as long as they are reasonable company, sometimes good company, but if it's bad company, evil, then perhaps you want to address the matter with respect. Don't yell, don't scream. The Prophet ﷺ, when he used to look at his wives, the eyes that he used to look with, used to make them blush. Subhanallah. The way he used to look at them, I can just imagine. I can only imagine because obviously he was a far higher example. Imagine a woman like Aisha radiallahu anha, blushing, and the Prophet ﷺ just looking at her. I wonder what look that was. Please go home and try it. 
please go home and try it. And some of us, we've never done it. So when you look the first time, she might say, stop looking at me like a devil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he actually was the best husband. He says, وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ And I am the best from amongst all of you to my family. I am the best from amongst all of you to my family. Do you know what else the Prophet ﷺ has done? He used to feed his wife with his own hand at times. Pick up the morsel and say, I'm feeding you. We wouldn't even do it if our wives were sick. We'd say, hang on, I'll bring a maid. I'll get some servant. They can do it for you. That's what some men would do. This is healthy, no problem. But you want to feed her. Why? My hand. In a romantic way. You don't go home and say, right, come here. Today I'm going to feed you. Come, come here. That's not how it works. It's romance. It has to be built up to that. Automatically it comes to that. You don't demand to be romantic. You've got to get it because it's reciprocated automatically. You smile at someone, they smile back at you. You wink at someone, you may get two winks back. What else? I hope it's the right person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. Then whenever they wanted something, he used to get it for them. He used to get it for them. And obviously they were not extravagant where they wouldn't have asked, right? You heard, I need the Mercedes. I need uh, this. I need a new kitchen. I need a new bathroom and toilet. I need everything new. You heard what the Prophet ﷺ used to do when his wives used to say, he used to get it for them. That's not it. Not that bad. Come on. But those simple things, they lived in a very simple environment. The Prophet ﷺ used to help them. He used to get for them. He used to get for them what they used to want. Do the errands and the chores with us. A lot of the times the wives are doing it themselves. Once in a while, I know you're at work. Once in a while, say, don't worry, I'll get the shopping list. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us.